Hi, my name is Phil Topness. I work on Microsoft's PowerCat team. And today we're going to talk about using Active Directory security groups to manage access to data in the Common Data Service, both roles and fields. And so, of course, as we look at the Common Data Service, we often use this funnel diagram. Everything is based upon the API. And we're going to stay close into this first circle in the funnel. Of course, authentication happens in Active Directory, but we're going to use Active Directory groups also to drive authorization to data. And of course, then that drives all the other capabilities in the common data service. We're going to stay really close to the core here. And I'm going to use this one slide to drive all the demos. We'll be going back and forth to this. We're going to talk about a change to Active Directory, a corresponding change in the common data service, and now how that affects some users' access to the system. And let's start with Active Directory. Let's start by creating an environment access control group and mapping that to the environment. And so starting here in Active Directory, if I go to my list of groups, and let's filter out to the relevant ones here that start with the CDS. I've got the CDS demo access group. I know in here I've got a handful of members, including these users that start with CDS. And these are the users that we'll be using throughout our demo. Even though they have weird names that start with CDS, that's just to keep them straight. But these are our user records. So what I've done in the Power Platform Admin for my Admin Center for my environment, I've taken that Azure Active Directory group and I've set it as the security group for my environment. And what that does is that controls which users will even appear in my environment for the assignment of security roles. So only licensed Power Platform users in this group or Power Platform admins are the users that will show up in our environment to even receive security roles. And let's look at that list. So if I come over here to settings, come to users and permissions, we look at users. So these are the users that were in here, including the CDS users that are in my group. Uh, Bianca Pisani and, uh, and another user, those are the ones that are showing up here in my list of users, as well as a few other Power Platform admins. So how does a user see our app if they're not in this list? The app we're going to be using during this session is the same one I used in the last CDS security demo. It's got a list of user-owned records and org-owned records, and it has some base level access into user and teams too. And so let's see, uh, one user that isn't in this list is Deborah Berger. So let's open this up as Deborah Berger. Now, when I show a non-admin user, I'll show them over on the right-hand side here. So the full screen will always be my admin user, and then the users whose access we're testing with will be on the right-hand side of the screen. And so for this, let's take this link to this app. Let's paste it in Deborah's window and see what she sees. So she gets a message saying exactly what's true. She needs to be added to a security group to even access this environment. All right? So we have no, even no ability to give her a security rule because she's not in the environment. So now let's take another step and let's use this security group one steps further. Let's create a group team, which is a team in the common data service that is mapped to this access group in Azure Active Directory. And so to do that, let's go into the advanced settings and let's create a new group team. And so I'll navigate to security and teams. And we're going to create a new Azure Active Directory security group team. So I'm going to create a new one of these. And so just for convenience, I'm going to give it the same name as our group, which is CDS Demo Access Group. I'll make myself the administrator of it. And then it needs the AD object, which is this here, this, this uh, GUID here. And now this is a team that is tied to that Azure Active Directory group. Now you notice there's no members in here. Our members, these folks here, don't show up until they log into uh, Power Platform into CDS for the first time. And so if we try that with one of these users, let's try with our read restricted user. When they load this up, they actually don't have access because even though they're in this team, when this user tries to access, they don't get access because we haven't yet given the security group. We can give the security group to this team, and if we come back here and refresh the team as well, because they've tried to log in once, we now see CD, CDS read restricted as the user that's listed in our team. So we need to give this team a security role. Now I'm going to give this security app security role because if we look here back on this app in the makers, we look where it's shared 
my security app is shared with my security app role. So, but, so by giving access to that security role, it will give users access to my app. And so now when we give that role, we come back as our read restricted user and come back here, let's uh, paste in the link to the app once again. Now they have access to the app, but not any of our protective records, not user org or owned own org owned records. And that's just because of the way I configured these security roles here. And so I've, the way I've set it up is by access group, when we assign them a security role as we just did, this app access role, that will give them access to the app, but no access to protected data. Now we could give a security role here that gave them complete access to the app. Maybe we have a very simple security model for our app and then we would be done. And then by adding people into this AD group, that would put them in the environment and give them access to the app and everything would be controlled by AD. For this particular app, I wanted to model out a slightly more complicated uh, security model. And so let's create a, or let's look at a limited read as Azure Active Directory group and a corresponding group team, Azure Active Directory group team in CDS that has a security role. And let's see if we can also then use membership in this team to drive some access to data. And in particular, we're gonna give access to records but not access to protected fields. And so coming back to Active Directory here, in our groups, I have this CDS demo read no restricted fields. Now let's go the other way. Before I add the user in here, let's come back to our list of teams. And I've already created the group team for this, for this particular uh, Azure Active Directory group. So this is already tied to Azure Active Directory. And now let's add a role. And I've got my read only security role already created here. And so now whoever gets added into Azure Active Directory will show up in this team and have read only access. So let's test out our uh, our read only, our read restricted uh, user now. Still no access, but if we come back and we add them in Active Directory, read restrict. Then in a second, when we come back as that user, they'll be, have access to our two restricted entities. Now we can see they have access to our two restricted entities, user, or, user owned and org owned. However, it's restricted because they don't have access to all of the columns there. Not only do they have read only access, like we said, but they don't have access to these two protected columns, nor do they have it in the grid view. And that's because those are set up as uh, with field security on them. And so we're gonna give our read only user full access to including the protected columns. And so we'll do that through another group and a field security profile. So coming back here to Azure Active Directory, I'm going into groups, I have a read-only users group. Let's add our read-only member into it. And then if we look back here at our teams in CDS, we have our read-only users. Let's add a security role to them. The same read-only one. And now this will give them the exact same user access as the previous user. And now just like the read-restricted user, we're gonna see that this user also doesn't have access to the secured fields. And we can fix that by giving them a field security profile. And so field security profiles are here under security in the advanced settings under field security profiles. And I cover these in more detail in another CDS video in this series. But here I've got field permission set for those two protected fields, field one and field two, to allow members of this field security profile to read and update them. And so let's add our AD connected teams, our group teams to this. So let's add both read-only users and looking forward, let's add the read-write users to this as well. And now they will have access to those protected fields. And if we come back to our read-only user here and refresh, now we can see that they have access to those, but also just still read-only. And so by adding that user to the read-only Azure Active Directory group and the corresponding team that connects to that group, 
and a field security profile. This person has access to read all of the records and all of the columns in the records, even those that are protected through the field security profile. So now let's finally, let's do a read write user. And so we've got a read write Azure Active Directory team uh, and also a group team and they've already been added to the field security profile. And so again, this will be a very similar process. We'll come back in here to our list of groups in Azure Active Directory. Here's our read write group. Let's add our read write member into here. Add members. Yes, read write. And then also in our list of teams, we have a read write team. And we can see this has a security role or does it? We need to add in our CDS read write security role. And now that we have these elements, we have the user added to the AD group. We have the group team created with an appropriate security role. And we've already added this this group team to the field security profile, this user should have read write access to, to the records. And so let's test this out with our read write user. So we can see they have access to the fields. If we open up this first record here, this person also has read write access because that's granted by the security role that we assigned to this team. And so by doing so then, we were able to drive all that action through Active Directory. It's by adding these members to these different Azure Active Directory security groups here at the bottom that drove all this action through the related group teams and their specific security roles and in this case, field security profiles that are also tied to this team. So this allows us to drive action on records and fields all through what's in Azure Active Directory. Now, this isn't the only way to go. You can, of course, do the same actions from within CDS just by creating teams and all, as I show in the other video. But this is for some organizations where they say, we've already got a process for managing who gets access to which Active Directory groups. This allows you then to tie all that activity and that management into the management of CDS as well. Now, one thing, if you really do want to control this, you need to make sure that your app administrators don't have access to create teams and security roles outside of this profile. And so if we look at this read write user, if this user goes into uh, the advanced settings, we've set up the security role so they don't have access to create new roles or create new teams. So if I come in here in security here, if I look in teams, they don't have the action to be able to create teams. They can only read teams. And the same thing if we go into security roles. They can't modify these security roles either. So that really kind of keeps all of the control in the hands of the AD groups for controlling membership. And then some administrator will need to be able to have the ultimate ability to change these roles uh, under whatever controls the organization needs. So I hope this is useful to you. Thanks for watching. This gives you an idea of how you can use some of the controls shown in the previous video to control um, control access to common data service data using Active Directory as a driver.